Hello, beloved. Today is Saturday of the 14th week after Pentecost, September 4th, 2021. Today, in our reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he encourages us to walk in unity with one another. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 119, beginning at verse 129. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady my steps according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 566 from Lutheran Service Book, By Grace I'm Saved. Today we sing stanzas 5 and 6. By grace to timid hearts that tremble, In tribulations furnace tried, By grace in spite of fear and trouble, the Father's heart is open wide. Where could I help and strength secure if grace were not my anchor sure? By grace on this I'll rest when dying. In Jesus' promise I rejoice. For though I know my heart's condition, I also know my Savior's voice. My heart is glad all grief has flown, since I am saved by grace alone. Today's reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 1. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves 
and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's time again for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue and bring to completion every good intent, that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today the Holy Church remembers and thanks God for the prophet and great deliverer of his people, Moses. We turn again to Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. The first of the great prophets, Moses was born in Egypt long after Joseph and his service to the Egyptian people had faded in memory. Under the harsh conditions at the time, all Jewish male children were ordered drowned in the Nile. This was an order with which Moses' mother, Jochebed, could not comply. She hid her little boy for three months, 
and then finally put him in a basket made watertight and placed him upon the Nile. In time, the daughter of Pharaoh heard the baby crying and sent her servant to fetch him. She recognized that he was one of the Hebrew children, but chose to adopt him and raise him as her own. When he was forty, Moses visited his own people. He saw an Egyptian abusing one of them. He killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. When he visited them the next day, he saw two Hebrews fighting and urged them to stop. They asked him who had appointed him ruler and judge over them, and if he intended to kill them as he had the Egyptian. Realizing his deed was known, Moses fled to the wilderness. There a Midianite priest took him in and gave him his daughter Zipporah in marriage. Moses stayed there for forty years. Then God appeared to him in a burning bush, revealing himself as I am. He sent a reluctant Moses back to Egypt to bring out the children of Israel from their slavery and gave him his brother Aaron as a helper and spokesperson. Pharaoh was not at all inclined to let Israel go, yet through a series of escalating miraculous disasters, God finally forced Pharaoh's hand. The final disaster was the death of the firstborn of all the Egyptians, but the saving of all Israelites who sheltered beneath the blood of the Passover lamb. Pharaoh then changed his mind and pursued the Hebrews. He cornered them by the Red Sea. But with a mighty miracle, the sea divided and Israel crossed, the waters a wall on either side. When Pharaoh and his army attempted to follow, the waters crashed over them. Thus Moses led the Israelites through the sea as on dry ground. He brought them to Sinai, where he received the Ten Commandments and the regulations regarding worship. Due to their faithlessness, Israel was condemned to wander forty years in the wilderness. During this whole time, Moses constantly interceded for them and pleaded with God to forgive them and to fulfill his promises to them. Moses was not allowed to enter the land of promise. He viewed it from the top of Mount Pisgah and there died. The first five books of the Bible are attributed to his authorship. In the Gospels, Moses was a witness of the glory of Christ in the Transfiguration. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through the prophet Moses, you began the prophetic pattern of teaching your people the true faith and demonstrating through miracles your presence in creation to heal it of its brokenness. Grant that your church may see in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the final end times prophet, whose teaching and miracles continue in your church through the healing medicine of the gospel and the sacraments. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We conclude again today with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.